from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Mystery explosions, shaking homes, and lighting up the Billings skyline. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on this Tuesday, February 6th. I'm Diane Parker in for Augusta McDonald. Local residents catching this strange phenomenon on camera, but so far no one can explain what's causing it. This morning, Q2's Charlie Kleps heads out looking for answers. It was certainly jarring to experience. It sounded like a bomb just outside Billings Heights resident Rebecca Wong's front door. We heard a very loud bang, uh, a flash of light. That noise. Paired with a large flash of light was loud enough it rattled the neighborhood. And the house actually shook, so it was pretty intense. Well, first I was worried that it could have been a gun, right? Somebody shooting, which is very scary. We have two small children. And that boom was also felt by others. I didn't see the flat, but we felt a large boom, yeah. almost like an earthquake or something. Like. Kelly Brady and her husband just live a few blocks over. Oh disheartening to say <laughs> you don't expect to have that and Friday's incident was followed by more concern Sunday do you see it flashing this video taken just south of Billings looking towards Hardin shows a light flashing over and over and left many residents asking why and we were asking for answers and we haven't I reached out and I tried to find out, but nobody seems to have an answer. Billings police say they didn't receive any reports of explosive devices being detonated and Northwestern Energy doesn't know of any transformers exploding. Certainly a mystery and one some say has been occurring for a while. <coughs> Billings resident Melissa Harrell caught this on her camera near downtown a couple of weeks ago. Well, I thought there was gunshot right at my house. A multitude of mysterious sights and sounds with no obvious cause. Well, I just kind of want to know what's going on. It's just scary, especially the unknown, not knowing what I'm trying to protect them from. That's probably the most disturbing part. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. New this morning, authorities are asking for help as the search for a missing lame deer boy enters day two. Here's what we know. Nine-year-old Hosiah Killsnight was resting at his grandmother's residence with a fever yesterday. He was taken on foot by this woman, Catherine Pretty on top, around 1120 yesterday morning. The family knows her, but says there's no reason why she would have taken Hosiah with her. There is concern for his well-being because of his feverish condition. Pretty on top has no vehicle, but authorities say she may try to find a ride to Billings or Crow Agency. If you have any information on Hosea or Catherine, you're asked to contact the BIA Northern Cheyenne Law Enforcement Agency at the number on your screen. And Miller joining us now on this Tuesday morning. And how yep. are we looking for weather? I've been hearing you say snow. Yep, there's a chance for okay. some snow. It all depends on where that low is tracking. It's going to slide more to our east now. So our eastern counties maybe have a better chance to see a couple of more inches of snow off of this system. Still looking at maybe one to two here in Billings. We'll show you the latest track of that snow coming up here in just a bit. Let's take a step back in time. Another day above average yesterday, a good 17 degrees above the norm, getting up to about 54. Our overnight low around freezing, that was above average as well. We'll see another day above average and then we're going to be cooling down moving forward. Had a top gust yesterday of 23 miles an hour. Should be quiet around most of the area today, but over on our eastern counties, they're closer to the state line. We could definitely have gusts over 20 miles an hour uh, this afternoon. All right, moisture totals pretty much on target where we should be for the month. A little bit ahead for the year. We're still pacing uh, behind. You see the snow totals now. Look at the snow total for the month uh, over a buck and a half in the hole. We actually may have a chance to make a dent in that here in Billings uh, for the season, though. We're still well in the hole. We got some work to do there. Uh, this is not going to be a big snowmaker for our area here in Billings, but any moisture we can get, uh, we can use it. 33 right now at the airport feels like 28. Winds on the northwest at about 6 miles an hour as we get up this morning. Temperatures in the 20s and 30s, uh, 40s and 50s today, and then we'll be cooling down with that winter system coming through. We'll take a look at the latest projected totals coming up here in just a bit. All right, winter system coming All right, back. Heading our way. All right, thanks, Miller. Thank you. This morning, talks to expand the Yellowstone County Jail are heating up. The city of Billings may end up paying for half of a proposed temporary holding facility that many believe will reduce crime in the area. Q2's David J has the latest.
The city recently proposed contributing $500,000 toward a temporary jail. The county came back and says what would actually work better is what it calls a short-term detention facility. The cost on that would be potentially $6 million, and commissioners would like the city to pay half and the county to pay half $3 million each. What information do we need to know and understand? That $6 million would go toward a 96-bed, two-floor addition to the current jail. This is really uh, important and positive. Uh, the community is moving in a good direction. Mayor Bill Cole says while the original proposal had the city contributing $500,000 to a temporary modular structure, he actually likes the county's response for a more permanent structure despite the cost. Both the, the city and the county recognize the importance of having consequences for bad behavior. These additional beds would allow police officers to come and take somebody for the jail to the jail for a short period of time until a judge can determine terms of their release. Get this project off the ground and uh, make the Yellowstone County safe again. Yellowstone County Commissioner Mark Morse says the first floor would house 48 beds and cost 4.7 million dollars. Then to keep men and women separated, a second floor with 48 more beds would add 1.3 to 1.5 million dollars. We will never be able to put additional cells in as cheap as that, uh, 1.3 to 5 million dollars for 48 cells. While the mayor seems in favor, some on the council raised concerns about the proposal. Are you going to come back and ask the taxpayers in the city of Billings to pay more? And that's kind of double dipping. However, others like the proposal. The short-term holding facility is a piece of a larger puzzle, but that larger puzzle is really critical. And this will be a great uh, deal to help make uh, City of Billings, Yellowstone County safer. Neither the city or the county are contemplating uh, a specific ask to the voters. Uh, we're all looking to other existing dollars to try to uh, fund this important project. In Billings, David J. MTN News. Valley Credit Union here in Billings has been struggling with ATM issues. While they're all up and running this morning, a tech issue kept them offline over the weekend, and a more serious problem shut them down temporarily two weeks ago. Skimming devices were installed on three of the credit union's ATMs here in Billings. These illegal devices created by criminals capture debit and credit card information and record PIN numbers. The Bank's Heights location was the primary focus of this scam, affecting about 100 members. Our members didn't suffer any losses. Basically, we got a hold of them and we got their money back. So Valley becomes the victim on this. It's more and more prevalent, unfortunately. It's best that people just really pay attention to their account. We spoke to one Billings woman who told us she's leaving Valley Credit Union for another bank, worried issues like this will continue to pile up. Yellowstone National Park will begin taking public comment on a proposed permanent road between Gardner and Mammoth. The park will offer three alternatives for a new north entrance road during webinars February 12th and 14th. Comments on the proposals will be accepted for 30 days with a draft environmental assessment of the final project expected this coming fall. The original north entrance road was destroyed by a 500 year flood event in June of 2022. Topping national headlines this morning, a massive storm system across California has turned deadly with at least three people killed in the northern part of the state. Residents are cleaning up after large parts of the state were hit by extreme weather caused by a so-called atmospheric river. In Southern California, pounding rains and high winds brought mudslides, fallen trees, and coastal flooding. To the north, the Bay Area is assessing the impact after the weather left behind damage and power outages. Country music star Toby Keith has died. The singer was diagnosed with cancer in 2021. For some two decades, Keith's music entertained country music fans worldwide, including troops serving overseas. CBS's Michael George takes a look back at his life and legacy. I should have been a cowboy. Toby Keith skyrocketed to stardom with his 1993 platinum debut album featuring Should Have Been a Cowboy. His songs hit familiar themes oh, he like Heartbreak and Love for Country. Made in America. His father's death in a car accident and the September 11 terror attacks inspired Keith to write Courtesy of the Red, White and Blue. The song sparked both praise and criticism. 
all of the extreme left was hating on it, and all extreme right on it was using me as their poster child. Keith played USO tours for American troops in the Middle East and performed at Donald Trump's pre-inauguration concert at the Lincoln Memorial in 2017. The country star was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2015. And we're outworked everybody, man. I just stayed on the ground, put an album out every year and had hits. In his youth, the Oklahoma native enjoyed live music at his grandmother's supper club. Later, he set out for Nashville looking for his big break. You give me a great idea and I'll write you a great song. He eventually sold more than 40 million albums and had 20 number one hits on the Billboard Country Song Charts. In 2022, Keith revealed he was undergoing treatment for cancer. He said he wouldn't play upcoming gigs because he needed time to breathe, recover, and relax. Michael George, CBS News. Toby Keith was 62 years old. Britain's King Charles III is undergoing outpatient treatment for cancer. Buckingham Palace says the 75-year-old monarch is resting at home and that he'll continue with his official duties, though his doctors have advised him to postpone public events. King Charles was discharged from a London hospital a week ago after treatment for an enlarged prostate which the palace says was not cancerous, but that's when doctors detected cancer somewhere else in his body. Well, you've heard of breakfast tacos, breakfast burritos. What about breakfast cookies? This morning, MTN's Jane McDonald is in Livingston, where a Hollywood actor is calling on the community to try a new pastry he helped create, all for a great cause. So this is the dough um, right before we start scooping it. Um, so I just remember all the times George would be in here like, here, here's a new batch of the cookie. Can you guys try it? And we got to see some like beginning ones. And then now we're really happy. And Jeff Bridges is really happy with the cookie too. The Livingston Community Bakery is a program of the Food Resource Center. And the bakery bakes bread that goes to food banks across the state. Um, it just feels like we're truly the community part of our name, Livingston Community Bakery. Bakery. And all the profits from the bakery go right back to the Food Resource Center. And the newest pastry to hit the menu has ties to a famous Hollywood actor. Um, that was sort of born of a personal project for Jeff. Um, and he has been a supporter of the Food Resource Center for quite a while. And so this was just another unique idea to uh, be a way to bring awareness to the bakery, to the organization, get some more foot traffic in the door. The bakery started with baking a dozen a day, but Margie said that they've had to increase production because of its popularity. Um, so Jeff Bridges, his cookie is, I would say, a hearty cookie um, that's great at breakfast or any time, of course, but he specifically recommends that you dip it in with your coffee. Um, he wanted a cookie that wasn't so much on the sweet side as most cookies tend to be, um, but there are dried cherries in there, so that's like a little tart and sweet. And in the words of Jeff Bridges, he says it tickles the tongue. All right, now with the help of Margie, we were able to get these cookies onto the tray and they're about to be popped in the oven. Now, you can kind of tell who's the professional and who's first time this was to bake cookies like this, but you talk about a hearty cookie. These are just going to be fantastic. Again, these are the gorgeous breakfast cookie right here at the Livingston Community Bakery. Margie, thank you so much for letting us come into the bakery right here in Livingston. Jane McDonald, MTN News.